Hello everybody, it's Billy and the Poopin' Chicken. I'm Billy the Crafty Floridian. And have you noticed anything? I finished it. Well, let me tell you. Wait a minute. I didn't bring it in. Tack on it. The pattern calls for a G hook. Oh, I used the J. It calls for number three yarn. And I used comfy cotton, which is, a, I think comfy cotton is a four. I really do. So anyway, this is, it's supposed to be a boho, um, boho, you know. And of course, I'm a big girl. So this, of course, I'm kind of, I could have probably gone, well, I don't know could have gone it's supposed to be big I mean it's just supposed to be like if you throw it on it's a little short for me um, I was thinking about maybe adding to the bottom of it so you can see that's where I stitched it together there but on the um, what is it? sleeve down here see how big it is so if it was a little bigger person it probably would look better on but you can't even tell. Shoot, I still can't tell. You can't even tell where I put the two pieces together. That's how good it was. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I shouldn't have used such a big hook. That was crazy. But I was thinking, and this should have been like a medium. Yeah, medium. Like with a 40 bust. Well, I'm far from a 40 bust. So... Anyway, so I thought it was cute, and if I think if I added more, it's a little heavy, but maybe I could wear it in the, um, you know, in the, um, the winter time. Um, but uh, and it's colorful, and you can see the the stitching on it. You see the sleeves. Which one was I looking at? This one. So you could see the this panel was done, and then this was attached to it. So yeah, I thought it came out nice. A little itchy though I don't know but I'm everything on me is itchy but this video is oh shoot I gotta get up my nose is running today so you have to forgive me um, this is question and answer video yes it is yay crazy me I had asked not on the video for um, picking the the winner but I had asked video before that at the very end I said if anybody had any questions for me to submit them and I would answer them well I didn't realize I would get hundreds of hundreds of no not hundreds I'm just teasing but I wrote down some of the some are though there's no I was really surprised there weren't that many duplicates here let me put my I'm gonna put my feet up a little bit and sit back and relax and just sit here and wear my new my new top I am going to, I think I will add to the bottom of it and see. Okay. The first question was by Vicki, and she asked what my favorite item to make. They're all my favorite. But there's one, there was one item that I was extremely proud of, and that was a, um, a, a jacket that I made and I made it the squares and I have a picture of it on and it's done in a blue green uh, I think it was blue green I can't think of who the yarn the yarn I think was it was either I love this cotton I mean I love this yarn or it was uh, red heart so anyway, I made this these big squares are 15 inch squares, and the pattern was from uh, Bag o Day Crystal, and um, she had um, uh, she made a, a duster or something with it, I think. But anyway, I said, well, I'm going to make a jacket, so I put them together and made a jacket, and I even put a hood on it, and it was all from. You know from here to here 
and I did it and I was very proud of that and I sent it to my niece and I don't know if she wears it she's never really commented on it or anything so it could be in a recycle bin somewhere but I I really really was proud of that jacket um, so yeah that that I'm very proud of I would that items that I liked that was my favorite to make I really enjoyed that and one other vitam, item that I made is there's another like 16 inch square that um, Crystal did and I made this thing that went I made the squares and then I designed this thing to go on the edge of a bed of my friend Karen and gave it to her that was beautiful and I was very very proud of those but yeah those are the two that I think I was the proudest of or my favorite to make um, how long in Florida my parents moved to Florida in 1966 I believe and I was in Virginia and I stayed there but I retired down here in 2002 2002 yeah that's how long I've been a, a permanent resident of Florida my favorite cocktail my favorite cocktail is laughter I love to laugh and I love to laugh at other people laughing <laughs> and yeah I like laughter that's my favorite cocktail how much oh, this is from Denise Hoffman <laughs> how much would would a woodpecker how much wood would a woodchuck chuck as much as he can that's my answer to that Miss Denise my favorite season in Florida by Ella B uh, Ella there aren't any seasons in Florida but I can tell you my two favorite months my two favorite months is October and May um, but since I've lived here, I'd say, um, of course, the winter is my favorite season. I, ha I hate the summer here because it's so hot. It's not only hot, it's humid. I mean, you go out and you walk from the door to your car and, all, and just you can be dripping. And that's, but that's for me. And I have a lot of weight, so I, you know, I store a lot of heat. So once I'm in the heat, I get hotter, and yeah. So really, I think May and October are beautiful months here. Those are the two months. Season, there is, aren't any seasons at all. How did I get started in my business? Oh my gosh. Okay, I think the way I got started that I can remember, God. I was, I decided to, um, that one of my charities that I was going to do was hats for kids and for school kids, uh, K through 12. And I thought, well, I need, I need to do something to, uh, at that time, my, uh, you know, I was living from, from social security check to social security check. And things were, you know, not difficult, but I was making it, <clears throat> barely. But I thought, now if I do this charity, and I get, you know, get all these boxes together and hats and stuff, then there's the expense of shipping. So I said, well, I need to make some money um, to help me with shipping of the products. So, um... I started making um, not project bags, damn it dolls. A girlfriend of mine said that she saw these damn it dolls on the internet or whatever, you know, she and they uh, they weren't made out of, of out of uh, yarn. They they were sewn together, and and you know they're crazy, you know, crazy faces and all that good stuff. So she said, I don't understand why you can't crochet them. Excuse me. So 
I did it. And I was selling my damn it dolls to help compensate for the expenses of shipping boxes. I didn't want anything to to not be able to do that. So I figured, well, you you know, you started it. Now it's time to you know pay the pay the pay the paper or what pop 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 pop. pop, pop. You know, pay the piper. I don't know. Anyway, so that's how I got started was making the damn it dolls. And I can even look back on my books. I have I kept all my kept everything in writing on what I sold and so on and so forth. And then for some reason and I don't know why, but I started making project bags. Um I think I lost um, whatever I had that I felt the creativity of doing damn it dolls hit the road. It just, it, it was just gone. I, you know, and I think um, I did enjoy doing them, but I liked creating them the way I want to create them. And they were got so that other people were saying, oh, I'd like this doll to look like this or do this or this and it became more of a chore chore god I can't talk today a chore than um, pure pleasure for me and that was when I started making damn it dolls was when I went on YouTube okay and that is from Velda thank you Velda did I pick, uh, Kathy Welch asked if I picked a name for my doll. No, it hasn't hit me yet. Even though I got, I got a ton of, uh, ideas from people, not only in the comments, but also in the live. And I just, it hasn't hit me yet. I mean, they just, her name will come. I mean, like Rosie, I knew Rosie was a Rosie. And when I, when I, uh, first fell in love with my dog, Molly, as soon as I saw her as a little puppy, she was a Molly. She was a little Shih Tzu. And I just loved her. She was a Molly. And it hit me. She, I keep wanting to call her Miss Beasley for some reason. But eh, we'll get to it. Uh, where do you find the fun material for your sewing projects? And that's the Wayward, Wayward Knitter asked that. Well, I find my material everywhere. Um, Cheryl and Cheryl uh, Bolts of Bolts Bags. She um, is into material, and she had sent me a whole bunch of material, and so I've been I've used used a great deal of that. But I go on like Fabric.com. I go to Michaels. I go to Walmart. I started out at Walmart and Hobby Lobby, and now I'm online in different places. And I also get fabric from uh, Cheryl's group um, with yarn and hook or bolts bags. I didn't look it up. I don't know. If she's, but she has a group that sells uh, pre-orders um, fabric. And um, I have pros and I have cons on, on that. Um, right now, it's hard. They're having trouble getting fabric. So... I'm I'm more of an instant instant kind of gal. In other words, order it. I want it next week. You know that kind of thing. And since I can't go shopping, that makes it even harder because I can't actually see it. I'm just so I go everywhere, everywhere. You can, you know. And then and then there's certain um, designers that I like, like Timeless Treasures, um, Kaufman. Mikhail, uh, Michael, uh, I can't remember, but anyway, there's, you, you see it, and you like it, and Etsy, Etsy, we have great, great, uh, people on Etsy that sell fabric, and, um, you, some of them, the same fabric, three or four of them will sell it, and you just look at the prices that they sell, but where it gets you is sometimes the, the price of shipping it is higher than what the material is, so you have to be real careful on all that. But some of these places ship free if you're over a certain amount. So that's basically where I get my fabric. 
um, ITVSKH15 asked me, have you ever considered doing a tutorials on some of the items that I make? All right, I'm going to be very, very honest about this. Honesty number one. I don't do tutorial, tutorials very well. I uh, don't have the patience for it. And I admire anybody that can do tutorials. I just, um, you know, with the camera, I, it's just too much for me. I just, I'm old. I don't need, I don't need <laughs> it's just too much for me. So I don't do tutorials. I haven't, I tried doing a tutorial once and it was a bummer. And number two, when I, when I create something, that I'm going to sell. What, why would I want to do a tutorial for others to make what I make that came from my creativity to, to, um, to do a tutorial on? Does that make sense to everybody? If I, I personally, when I did bags, started doing bags, I went on YouTube. I looked at every conceivable person that makes bags. So what I did, and I, and I experimented, I, I made different, different kind of bags, different ways. I add a little of this, a little of that of myself into that bag. And, and then I finally came up with a bowl of plate, you know, a, a, a pattern that I liked, that I took from other <laughs> vendors. So if you see something and you, you can take and put your own spin on it. And that's what I did with the bags that I make now. I mean, I have, I borrowed the little handles from uh, Rel from Dabbling Hook because that's such, it was a brilliant idea. But I, at least I watched her videos and I sent her a message and told her and, you know, and I should have asked her first before I sent her the video, but I wasn't thinking. I, I was, it was, I did it off the fly. My, I don't, I don't do the, I don't sew them in exactly like she does because I have a different type of um, drawstring on mine. But um, I, I, it doesn't make sense. It's like um, Bolt's bags, uh, you know, Cheryl's Bolt's bag. If she went and showed everybody how she made her bags, then they can make their bags and make her bags and sell them. And, and that's that doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, that's my logic on not doing tutorials about things that I make. I mean, I tell you guys how I make them. So if you want to try it, go for it. I'll tell you what cord I use or what yarn or what pattern. And then that's basically up to you to do it. I just suck at tutorials. I just suck. I tried that cow last year, and I just, I don't have the patience for it. I can't do it like, you know, no, not my bag. Not my bag at all. Okay. Wendy Wessa asked, before my channel, how did I spend my day? Um, how did I spend my day? I, I did a lot of crocheting. I crocheted a lot. Um, I read. Um, I would go to the library and check out 15 to 20 books. I'd come home and I'd read for, and you, you know, you check them out for like three weeks or whatever. And in those three weeks, I would read all those books. And in between, I crocheted. Um, but I've always kept myself very busy. Um, when I first moved down here, uh, I had set on certain things that I wanted to do when I retired. One was be a mentor. So I got into the mentor 
uh, program for, um, uh, what's the name of it? Oh, it left me. I forgot what it was. But anyway, I was a mentor to a, a, a beautiful African-American girl. And I had her from fifth grade through um, when she was going into her junior year at uh, Florida A&M. Um, and she, um, she was killed. Her girlfriend stabbed her in the neck. So she never got to finish college. She was an avid, an excellent basketball player. I used to go to all of her games here at Riverview and um, she wanted to be a professional basketball player. And she was one of like eight or nine children. And um, she worked on her first she was in this program because they were going to pay for her education. So she worked very hard. And she was a very smart girl. And uh, it broke my heart that that happened. Um, but I, when I crocheted, I would buy my yarn from Walmart. Well, I used to buy it at Target. And then I went to Walmart. And I even bought, I don't know if y'all ever heard of this, in North Carolina, there's a store called Roses. Roses, used to, that's where I used to buy the yarn. Uh, Grandma used to buy her yarn. And, um, and I, would, I would buy yarn with the idea of making um, afghans. And when I was in my 20s, I made an afghan for each one of my nieces and nephews at the, that were, you know, had been born at that time. And um, then I just, I, I stopped doing that. And then I started making other things. But when I retired, that's when I became more into crocheting. But I only did it by projects. In other words, when I started my YouTube channel, I only had like five or six skeins of yarn. Really. And that's the truth. Because I would just buy enough to do a project. Like if I was going to do an uh, uh, an afghan, I would uh, decide what colors I wanted. Then I would go and get each color and how many I needed. And, you know, if I did it a granny square or a ripple or whatever, whatever I was making. Or, and then I started knitting and I would buy, um, and I taught myself to knit. I was not watching YouTube at that time. I would, what I did on knitting is I went into and I put in uh, uh, knitting stitches or whatever it was. And then I would find what the, the, the stitching, the like moss stitch and all that good stuff. And then I would write it on a, a five by seven card or whatever. And what I would do is put for each row I put it on a separate card and that helped me keep track because I'm very bad I am so bad at keeping track even when I do a knit pearl knit pearl I have to keep checking it and checking it because I'm so afraid that I'm my mind's gonna wander and I'm gonna do two two pearls instead of two two um, knit stitches so I'm that's the way I started was putting on uh, each each stitch I would do a separate card for each line and that's how I learned to knit oh boy that's that was a big question uh, also Wendy asked me does the charities pay for my shipping no I pay for my shipping and yes that's the way I want it I don't want you to pay it's my charities and I pay the shipping. I just want you to make the hats or scarves, whatever you send me. And um, I have um, a big container now of um, granny squares or squares that you guys have sent that I haven't used yet. And I've been using those to make the, the bags with the handles to help compensate for the shipping. And I'm going to take some of those that are left and put them together and make blankets. Maybe send it to uh, Rose Like Crochet. I just have to get the 
size. I know she gave me, I watched one of her videos and she gave the size of the squares, I mean of the blanket. So I could probably put her together, two or three of them at least. So, yeah. So, no. But I, listen, I take care of it. I take care of it. Don't worry. Uh, uh, when did you start doing all your crafts and did you teach yourself? Yes. Most of, yes, I taught myself, except crocheting. My grandmother taught me that. She did, she only taught me, uh, not per se how to crochet, but she taught me how to do a granny square. And that, that's all she did was sit there and make granny squares. And when she went, uh, when she was going blind, she gave me what her, whatever yarn she had left over, plus a basket of squares. And I put them together and made a brown and beige um, blanket out of it, of what she had given me. And she kind of did the same thing. She would have so many uh, by per per project. And that's kind of the way I work, too. Um, and I did teach myself. And I do, uh, I started doing crafts back when I was uh, late, late teens, early 20s, I guess it was. And that's, uh, I think it's Ursula and Crochet the Mama Bear that asked that question. Uh, Gracie asked me, uh, ever done diamond, diamond painting? No, and don't have any interest. Where's Rosie? Rosie, Mabel is hooked, asked about Rosie's here, but she sleeps all day. And the reason you guys saw so much of her before is because I was filming in the corner in one of my the corner of my living room by the window and she would always have her little track across my chair to get in the window and sit there and that's why you guys um, saw a great deal of her at that time how long how long the maker of yarny thing Oh, I can't even read my own writing. How long a maker of yarn of things? Oh, how long am I a maker of yarny things? Forever. So, what, 60, 50 some years, I guess it is. Is that a unit flat you live in or do you own a rent? I rent... I, uh, this is a two bedroom, two bath apartment in the 55 plus community. And Tracy G asked me that. Uh, Amy asked me, what is my favorite decade so far? Well, I, oh God, I love the 50s. And I had a hell of a good time in the 60s so um it, it's a toss-up between the late 50s and the early 60s that's my decade <laughs> not much to say about the 70s and 80s and 90s because those are all working hard and living day to day and that's it that's that's my favorite do you ever get bored living by yourself Sheila. Sheila, I never, ever been bored. I know that's terrible to say, isn't it? But I haven't. I, I'm always doing something. I, I can't, I can't sit there on my hands and, and not do so. I mean, sometimes I have to force myself to sit and, and hide my hands so that they're not doing anything. Um, I'm not a big cleaner anymore I did that all my life everything was clean and dust and washed and all that stuff eh, I don't do that anymore eh. it's a waste of time it's just the other day I just I just wiped off the table where the TV's on you know the it's in a one of those wall things entertainment centers and I just wiped it off and I looked at it the next day and there was dust on it and I, I'm going uh, 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 uh. so yeah I'm not a cleaner I'm not I just I never get bored 
And the one thing I don't do is, like this, this top, I will not make a second one. I, I can't bring myself to make a second one. I'm a one-time gal. <laughs> I just can't. I make something once and that's it. I get bored. And that's why I keep so many projects. Like I've got a knitting project and a crocheting project. Now I'm knitting a sweater now. And I just finished crocheting this. So that's that's finished. So I got and I have a little sweater that I'm making for um, a little boy. And I started crocheting that, but I haven't gotten really into it because I wanted to finish this. So now that I've got this finished, then I will go and make that sweater. That's not going to take any time at all. But, and then I like to shop for, you know, different patterns and things that, that just jump out at me and say, oh, you've got to make that, you know. Like I was just watching uh, Debbie at the Canadian Crotcher. And she made um, she made a um, a dishcloth, and it says F twenty twenty, and you could spell the word out F, you know, ends in a K. And I thought I love it, <laughs> I love it, and she knitted it, and I'm gonna get that pattern, and I'm gonna knit some of those washcloths because that's I am with her. That's exactly how I feel about this year. It, it's just been. It has not been one of the best years of the 75 or 76 years I've lived. Yeah, so I am making some of those. So you see, you see you're, if you watch his podcasters every now and then, you'll see something that you really want to make. Now, that I really want to make, and I could probably make two or three of those. But I'm not a sit here and, like, if I liked a hat, I couldn't, a certain hat, I couldn't sit here and make that hat 15 times. If you, ever, if you go on my um, Facebook page, Crafty Floridian or whatever, I have photos of things that I've made in the past. And you'll you'll notice, you won't see. If you, I have a whole bunch of hats that I had posted pictures of. And they're all different. Because that's what I like. I like the variety and I get bored very easily. And I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I will, I will watch a movie. It say it's a two-hour movie, and I'll sit there and watch it for an hour and 45 minutes, and then all of a sudden, I'll just get up and walk away. It didn't hold my interest enough to see the end of it. I just can't be bothered. It'll go something else. Okay. Uh, I do not get bored, Sheila. No, no, no. What is the clear plastic thing for keeping my patterns? That is a sleeve. It's a it's a plastic sleeve, and if you could go on Amazon and get it, it's like a couple bucks, and it was given to me uh, by Chiquita of Chiquita Crochet, Deborah. She sent that to me, and then another lady sent me one, and uh, they're great for the pattern, especially if you have to count rows, and you can just take that little pen and just mark it. And then, then just take the end of it and erase it away. So you can get it on Amazon. It's a, it's a pattern holder thing. Do I still make damn it dolls? No. No, that was the next question from USA Crochet Podcaster Gloria. No, I don't. I might one day when I have nothing else to do. But I have a lot to do. What state born places I've lived, and that's from Virginia P. Virginia. I was born in Long Branch, New Jersey. I have lived in uh, North Carolina, but most of most all of my life, I lived in Northern Virginia. I lived at Falls Church, Arlington, Alexandria, Centerville. Gainesville. I've lived in all those places right there in in uh, I would say I lived in Falls Church I grew up in Falls Church from the time I was in I think it was third grade, second or third grade and I graduated there and then um, I lived in 
you know, moved into an apartment with three other girls. Oh, it was a riot. We had a two bedroom, two girls in each apartment, one bath. Mm -hmm. But we all, we all worked different schedules, so it, it was fine. And I also lived in uh, Miami, Florida for a couple years. I've lived here in Sarasota in my younger years when my mother was killed and then my father and I came down here for short periods of time. I mean, actually sold everything and came down and stayed for a while and then had to knock some sense into my father and get him straightened out. And then I went back to Virginia. And uh, where else have I lived? But here, Sarasota and in Northport. I think that's it. I'm not a big, I'm, I love to travel, but I don't, you know, that's a lot of places, I think, but a lot of people have been on it. But, I, but Virginia, Northern Virginia is like home to me. Uh, have you lived in Florida all your life? No, Linda, I haven't. And um, my um, parents moved here in 66. I moved here in 2002. So my parents were here when, it, I mean, it was small. Of course, I came down couple times a year for vacation uh, with my parents if I was stranded on a desert island who would I want to be with and night owl Vicky <laughs> Matthew McConaughey period in the story uh, what size cord do I use for my coin purses Barbara York wanted to know I use um, Barbara a uh, Bonnie's cord you can get it from Hobby Lobby is the cheapest place to get it and it's 2 mm, 2 millimeter, millimeter, 2 mm's. You try to pronounce it. So I, yeah, that's what I, and I get it from Hobby Lobby because it's like 2.99 or 3.99. Uh, the colors, sometimes you just can't get the right colors. If you go on Amazon, they sell it, but boy, they're like three times more. What is your favorite thing to make? And I think I told you that. And that was uh, Susan Hebert asked me that. And I told you what it was. Um, are you a widow, widow? And do you have any children? I am not a widower. I do not have any children. I am an old spinster. I've never been married. I have been loved. And he died. Uh, and um, that's it. Uh, am I going to get Rosie to say hello? Maybe in the next video I'll I'll get her in here. But she's uh, she's a quiet kind of gal. I thought maybe she might be in here. She likes to hide back in there. But she's probably on the bed. She, she lays on my nightgown on the bed. Besides cats and dogs, your favorite animals. And that's from Deborah. Oh, Deborah from Canadian Question. My favorite animals being cats and dogs. Pandas. I love pandas. Uh, I went uh, to the Washington Zoo and when the pandas came and oh, they're so cute and the way they play and eat bamboo and they roll in the grass. They're so playful. Uh, I'm not into horses. I don't like anything real big. <laughs> horses used to scare me when I was younger. But, um, cat, you know, we just wasn't around a lot of animals growing up. And uh, but cats and dogs, uh, besides cats and dogs, I like pandas. Uh, Roseanne Slayer. <laughs> when do I sleep and how long to make a purse? suggest a store oh when do I sleep uh, preferably whenever I want to <laughs> whenever I get tired and um, whenever I get tired I sleep I take little naps if I get up too early I'll end up taking a nap in the morning and a nap in the afternoon uh, sometimes I'll get, like the other night, I got so tired, I laid down at 6 and slept till like 7.30. I can't help it if I get tired. But normally, 
like last night I wanted to finish this so it was about two or three o'clock before I got to bed it just depends what I'm doing and how I feel that's when I get my sleep because it doesn't do me I could take a I could go to bed at 11 o'clock like I did the night yet yeah, the night before night before this I take a sleeping pill I go to bed it was like 11 no because I was on here at 11 so I finally got to bed I guess about 12 31 o'clock and I look I finally went to sleep and I looked at the clock when I woke up it was like 4 30 a good four to five hours is about it for me um and she's how how long to make a purse the little the little these little um these little purses I would say it takes me uh, making them it doesn't take that long probably probably make this in 45 minutes or so but the hard part is is sewing this so that it's nice and neat right around here and I'm, I get better and better at it. And then you want it to look really nicey on the outside too. Uh, I have problem with the dark colors. So I try, if I make this, then I leave the sewing of the uh, clasp on until in the morning. So I can sit in the sun, in the light, because uh, I just, it's hard for me to see dark colors like that. So, uh, see, this is the darker color, and I had to wait until in the morning to um, add the, you know, to sew this on. So, if you, I'd say you could make one of these in a couple of hours, for sure. And I try to do one a night uh, before I do anything. Isn't that pretty? I've already sold this, but somebody sent me this pen. And I appreciate it very much, but I've been putting my pins on my on my uh, on my bags, and I think this is absolutely beautiful. I think she's going to be very pleased. This is the one that had the kitty cat on it, and I took the cat off and put put this on. I'm gonna get going. I've been I've been talking too much. Okay. Um, are you originally from Florida? No. How many notebooks? Oh, this is from Madonna. She couldn't ask one question. She had to ask a whole hoodle hoodle herd of questions. All right, how many notebooks so far? I went and counted those this morning, just for you, Miss Madonna. And I have 170 notebooks. And I have one container of six crayons. And I have one container of 12 scissors. And, uh, um, of course, they're going to go out next week. And I've already printed um, my donation. I've already printed a bunch of donation um, uh, confirmation forms that I have to fill out uh, for the Kids in Need Foundation. I've already got that ready, so that's ready to go. So, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Um, she says, what does uh, BFFFW stand for? Which is what I call Cheryl. I will not tell you. Um, because that's... I... The, the gentleman that I worked for for 23 years or whatever it was used to call me an FW. And uh, you have to figure it out for yourself, Miss Madonna, but I'm not telling I asked Cheryl if I could reveal it. She said no. So that's between her and I. Um, ever going to make Dammit Dolls? Not anytime soon. Um, <laughs> you're so crazy. She said that, uh, that uh, Cheryl and Laura were my two uh, top friends. She wants to know if, I would, if she could be in the top 50. Honey, you're in the top five. Absolutely. You're in the top five. And I'll put you uh, at, at number three. How's that? Because I love you too. How many hours do you crochet? Cindy Moulter asks. Um, I like to, I, 
if I come in and I sew, I try not to sit more than a couple hours at a time. Then I get up and I go in the other room, I prop my feet up, and I pull out my crocheting or knitting. So I would say on an average, I crochet and knit probably, and if I'm working on something close to the end, like I did this and I worked on it for hours, um, oh gosh, I would say on an average, I probably crochet about um, maybe six hours a day between sewing and and sleeping. <laughs> do I miss painting? Madonna said, do I miss painting? Sometimes I do, Don Madonna, but not, not really. Uh, I kind of lost my mojo there. But it doesn't mean that I won't pick it up again because I might pick up a canvas and some little paints and maybe throw something else together. Do you want me to paint you something, sweetheart? Because I'll paint you a flower or something. <laughs> Ever going to make damn it dolls? Not, uh, no, no, no. How many hours do you crochet? Oh, what color? What color? Oh, the color of the unforgettable yarn. Pat Johnson want to know is called Dragonfly. Isn't that a pretty color? Now it shows up perfect. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to make something out of this. This is the uh, yarn that um, Cheryl sent me. And that's Pat John's. Oh, that's it. I think that's it, guys. We went through them all. Uh, yes, that's it. That's it. I am right now. I did um, a road trip yesterday. You know, I went to have lunch with uh, Cindy Surges and her and Cy. And um, I put... I did it. I had like three different videos, right? Because it, you know, kept cutting off or, you know, I just had to hang up and stuff and then start over again. So I found, I got this little thing that you pieces all together. So I put them all three together and then I watched it again and then I wrote little text on it. Okay, so that's probably nothing to you guys, but that's a big improvement for me. I'm surprised that I did it. But I did. I didn't lose. I didn't lose it. I thought maybe you know working with it. So it's downloading now. It's only taking three hours to download from my phone. I I got to find a quicker way to do it, and I, and someday I'll take the time to research it when I have time. Right now I'm just I just got I'm just so busy. I just got things that I have to do, things that I like to do. You know. So uh, I'm going to end this. This is way too long. I'm sorry. I just kept talking like that. And it only showed you what I finished. So really, that's it. This. I haven't made any more purses because I was out all yesterday. And then when I got home and I went to visit my friend, you know, after I left Cindy and Cy, then I went and visited my friends Karen and Jim for about an hour or so. And then a storm was coming. So I thought I better get home. So when I came home, I had my clothes off before I even reached the bedroom. And, uh, cause I was dying, uh, whew, it was so humid. And, uh, then I laid down and took a two, two, three hour nap. I mean, I was, I was exhausted. It doesn't take much, it seems to make me tired, to make me so tired. But I slept, so I'm, you know, feel pretty good. But it was a wonderful time. And, uh, if you're ever in the area, um, please let me know and we'll get together and do and uh, maybe do a yarn shop or something. And I am going to check out that place in Inglewood, even if I have to drive down there myself and check it out. Cause uh, I think it's Lori might be coming or is coming in November. So um, that's when it's real busy here. When the snowbirds come down. Anyway, that's it for today. I've answered all your questions and that was fun for a change, huh? So listen to me and Mimi. Um, I think that's, that's it. And then I will, once that other one, um, downloads, I will send that to you. Um, we'll jump, jump right into it. I want to look at it again in case I really messed up somewhere, but pff, it's a pain in the butt to kind of keep watching them and watching them and adding and putting them all together and all that stuff. That's a lot of work. And that's all I've been doing all day is these videos but i love you guys gotta talk to somebody once in a while besides rosie okay my friends take care 
Is this the weekend? This is Saturday. No. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is Saturday, isn't it? Okay. I got to go get my clothes out of the dryer and put my other clothes in the dryer. Take one clothes out and take the other out of the washer. Dry it. You know what I mean. Yeah, I had to do laundry. I was running out of stuff, like nightgowns and stuff like that. So, have a great weekend. Stay safe. Please wear those masks. Yesterday, I wanted to smack those people that didn't have masks on. Just want to smack them on the side of the head. Put those, cover up that. And then when they cut it right here, then there's the nose hanging down. Oh, I just, I was just watching a bird walk by. Oh, we have these beautiful sand cranes, but they are, they're not around here. When I lived in Sarasota, they were all over the place. Beautiful birds. Beautiful. I love birds, too. All right. Bye. Talk to you guys later.